good evening. It's, it's really a pleasure to be able to address you in your very important role in Congress. And, and I'm very thankful that you're there. Only people who knew me before I became member of Congress say that. <laughs> 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 because it is really not that important. I'm just kidding. <laughs> constituents who care about making peace in so many places. And as we just celebrated the founding of the UN um, uh, well, 78 years ago, I think, in June, mm -hmm. and the idea of ending the scourge of war, I am encouraging uh, Congress to be bold. I know this isn't maybe not the right Congress for this, but to be bold in looking at that possibility that our current uh, and our current conflicts could trigger uh, not a terrible catastrophe, but a new outpouring of international desire to put an end to the armaments uh, that every country feels like they need to have, and um, really put an emphasis on peace and peace. And I'm here to also deliver a resolution that was passed by the Minneapolis area synod of the Lutheran Church in assembly <coughs> on Ukraine, where we asked for your support for congressional hearings to look carefully at uh, the concerns of making war in Ukraine and to include people who are voices of peace. Yes. Uh, alternatives to violence and not to the arms industries. And also to push for negotiations and a ceasefire so that the carnage and the destruction can cease as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. It's clear that we can negotiate, but it's, it's likely that the U.S. cannot lead that negotiation. And again, uh, so much is at stake. Um, we need to avoid catastrophe. The world could not afford uh, taking these nuclear risks or the long-term pollution, as you saw in the legacies of war in Vietnam. I can safely say you've known me long enough to know <laughs> that, that in, in every room I am, those are the conversations that, that I'm having. You know, I, I, I think there's few of us who've experienced war in Congress, um, whether we were in the military or we were on the receiving end of, of that conflict as children. And I will say that there are, there are those of us who are advocating for an end um, to, to, to war, um, to trying to find a peaceful path. Um, as, as I said in, at the beginning, it really does feel like there, there, there is more um, there's more fires to put out now than there were a couple years ago. And it is, you know, even in my home country of Somalia, um, where there hasn't been an armed conflict in a really long time outside of fighting terrorism, there is armed conflict in almost every other town uh, in, in Somalia, peaceful places that I was able to freely move in just December when I was there. Um, my staff that's considering in, uh, going to visit family are now you know, making different decisions uh, about whether they can go to the same places, again, that I you know, was able to um, move around just a couple of months ago. And, and you know, again, it's not just Ethiopia. It's not you know, the um, uh, Sudan. It's, it's, it's a lot of places. And there is, there is an opportunity for us to, to lead a global peace effort. There is an opportunity for us to have different conversations than the conversations that we're having in, in Congress. Um, but it, it, it is alarming that I'm in the, in the minority in that sort of way of thinking. Um, I remember a couple of months ago after we came back from Vietnam and Indonesia on our CODEL, we went to Hawaii to visit with our military leaders. 
And as they talked about, you know, preparing um, and the possibility uh, of us going to, to war with China and, you know, all of the things that they've been trained to think about, um, one of the things that they said to us was these resolutions that you all are passing in regards to China and in regards to Taiwan um, are not helpful. What you think is positive posturing is negative posturing. And, and I, I thought it was a really important um, message to hear from our military leaders. Um, because that is not something that our members of Congress are often hearing as uh, we are in, in, in this sort of geopolitical um, uh, posturing uh, mode. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I took that to heart. You know, I, I haven't supported any of those resolutions. And, and I, I think it's really important for us not to just be um, an active voice in, in saying, you know, we, we shouldn't be selling this many weapons, we shouldn't be transferring these one, many weapons. You know, there are a lot of countries that I, I don't want weapons being sold to. I get called all kinds of names because I know what is possible. Um, I don't believe in lifting arms embargo in, for many countries. Um, that, that that in itself is is what also needs to happen when you're taking that vote, right? Because we have to understand that when people say we had a role in this, like they're not just talking about whether we are actively participating in war, they're talking about all of the other things that might have been um, part of our actions that could have led to that. Um, you know, and, and words have meaning, action has meaning, all of these things have meaning to, to people who, who watch us like a hawk. I, we might not be paying attention to the rest of the world, um, but the rest of the world pays attention to everything that I do, um, and, and I, I, that we do in, in Congress. And I think a lot of my uh, colleagues in Congress are not very, very cognizant of, of that, and many of them need to be, because our actions could have deadly consequences um, for many vulnerable people around the world, including ourselves.